excited for tonight? Very excited for tonight. Yes, it's a good good turnout. I'm glad to see London is, you know, back on track and open for business, which is all very very exciting. And being back in business, you've you've adapted the screenplay yes. as well as directed. When you when you were adapting the book, do you think in pictures? Do you think how you want to direct yeah. it, or do you? It's funny. Uh, yeah, when, when when you're writing the script. You have a very, very precise sort of visual account of the film running in your head, and um, you know what everything should look like. You know what all the locations should look like. You know what all the performances and all the actors should look like. And then when you come to make the film, everything is different. Everything is totally different. So that's the process that I found hard to get my head around to begin with because um, filmmaking is, a, is always a series of weird creative compromises. You know, you, don't, you never find the location that's in your head. You find a location that's good but different and good in a different way than what you'd expected. So you slowly, slowly reassemble your expectations and make something a third thing, which is halfway between what you'd imagined and what the film eventually becomes comes to pass. Yeah. And I saw the film in three very sort of definite acts. Oh, you're going to say 3D. Oh, yeah, no, 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 definitely not the same film. Um, and it was really uh, Philip's motivation in the beginning. He yes. wants justice, then yeah. he it's desire that drives him, yes. and then self-preservation. Is that how you saw the... the, the when sort you, of. Yeah, sort of. I mean, I think that at the beginning you trust that Philip is your reliable narrator, you feel that he's your way into the film and you kind of believe what he says and thinks. And then the minute she arrives, you start to question whether he is reliable or, or not. And then he gets ill. And he gets ill in several ways. He gets ill because he is ill. He, he might have a, a tumour or something, we don't know. But he gets ill because he's a junkie. He's addicted to Rachel and, he, and he's no longer responsible for his behaviour. And he becomes unreliable. And we don't quite trust what he thinks, and that makes the whole brew even more weird and wonderful because we don't know whether we should choose between him and or her. And I think that's what's so beautiful as well that's come out the, the nuances of the actors and what they're able to bring, and that yes. they really keep the audience on their toes. Don't they? Yeah, they do. They keep us guessing right to the end and beyond, actually. Yeah. Yes, they do. Really. Yeah, yeah. And you touched upon the locations. One of the, the beautiful things that you capture in all your films is you transport the audience so that they could actually be there and I just wondered how you create that and, and is that through your, the relationship with your director of photography? Uh, absolutely, totally. Mike Ely is a wonderful guy and we worked on three or four things together now and he's a hugely important collaborator for me. I think all, all filmmaking aspires to eavesdropping and I think that um, you want the audience to believe that only they are in the room as individuals with these people having these weird emotional experiences with each other. Uh, that's, that's what I aspire to making.